Hello. Uh, I haven't done one of these walking, rambling videos in a little while. Uh, thought I'd just give it a try again. Uh, just in a few points. Um, one of the things that's uh, really uh, being clarified for me. Uh, over a period of time uh, working with demons and the demonic is that uh, is the, uh, the the type of 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 devotion uh, uh, that might be appropriate for demons uh, because they definitely teach you things as you go along and uh, the thing that's really uh, come home to me is that uh, demons don't want emotional, sentimental, kind of splurgy devotion. Uh, they're very practical uh, entities. They're very practical. And the level of devotion uh, comes more from the sort of gut. It's more like the sort of attraction that people feel sexually. In fact, demons are very interested in human sexuality. Um, so that's kind of important, really, uh, because people are conditioned, certainly in, in uh, Christian cultures or monotheist cultures, to uh, have a very sort of florid sense of, of devotion. And in my experience, um, demons, in terms of the demons you would generally work with, are not so much like that. Uh, you know, um, that's not very useful for them. Demons, in my experience, give you the, uh, the sense that they are, you know, they're guys with a job to do. And, uh, you know, if uh, they've shown up and honours you with that experience, uh, then they uh, probably feel that there's something they can do with you. And, uh, and there may be sort of like mutual benefit involved. Um, and they actually seem to encourage us to actually be more like that ourselves. They actually encourage us to be more like demons and to be more practical emotionally. Uh, uh, and they are definitely not particularly, well, it depends, you know, but they're not really that interested in you giving yourself away. I mean, uh, which is actually a very good thing. Uh, it's not that that sort of like surrender doesn't have a place in 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 spirituality, of course. Uh, but dealing with the demonic, it very much is that although you can be devoted, uh, you can give a great deal, but there is never a sense that a person actually gives themselves away. That's my experience. Uh, I'm, obviously, they're not going to stop you doing. They're not going to stop you making mistakes. Quite often, yeah. Um, at least when you're dealing with the the more initiatic side of things, there is uh, there isn't uh, very much of a a trend to sort of like stop you making your own mistakes. You learn by uh, what you do and what you experience. Uh, nevertheless, if you get the uh, right relationship with uh, with demons they can be very helpful and like I said they can be very practical and they will put you right on certain things you know um, if you've got to that position with them uh, I, I, I guess one question would be 
how do you get to that position with demons? And um, I can only uh, really speak for my own uh, course of things, uh, but uh, you need to establish uh, your relationship with their world. Uh, you need to establish your relationship with the hierarchical principles of their world, in a sense. Yeah, I mean, for, for me, that was uh, through establishing a relationship with Satan, with Sets, or Set Shaitan, if you like. Um, that was um, how it, it worked for me, rather than just saying, oh, I'll just call him this demon, or oh, I'll just call him that demon, or, 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 or what have you. In fact, there wasn't any calling. Uh, there wasn't any calling. Demons, demons show up. Uh, demons show up. Uh, the work I did was in establishing that relationship with uh, with with Satan, and uh, and everything followed from there. So, it, in a sense, it had its own organizing principle. Uh, but just to return to um, what I was saying before, it's really important that you don't just give yourself away um, it's really important uh, that uh, that you stand up for what you actually most deeply want that's the most important principle I think is like be honest be honest about what you really really desire and what you most deeply desire and what you actually want don't do something just because you think you, you should don't have a particular kind of relationship just because you think you should, yeah. Uh, aside from, you know, the, the most obvious things, like you need to show respect, you need to show um, uh, courtesy uh, to these beings who are very old and uh, and can be very very wise, you know, uh, um, and in their own in their own stream, they are of course very wise because they are much much older than us so they have far more experience um, than we do but it is important that a person doesn't just give themselves away, give themselves away uh, because that is uh, really uh, it's it's replicating a Christian pattern basically and it's it's not appropriate isn't appropriate. Now, uh, another subject is is how we view the infernal, um, and I consider the infernal to be uh, really essential to uh, to what you might call operative or, or, or practical magic. Uh, I think it really is the crux of it. And um, so, what do we mean by inf the infernal? Well, uh, the infernal, I mean, the term in, in itself actually relates etymologically to the underworld. Um, and so we can see here a lot, a lot of things uh, that includes the world of the dead in, 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 in a sense. And it also includes uh, those things that we'd normally consider and, and, and think about as, being, have, as having underworld or chronic qualities. And these are things which um, which are very important in magic because they're very um, they're very powerful at our level and they relate at our level as well, while not actually being of this particular world. Uh, uh, one thing I would note here is that uh, the demonic is. Uh, I would consider at a level almost parallel to ours, yeah, uh, but it is not this universe. Uh, so um, it has qualities which are in some sense very familiar and kind of in other senses qualities which are very alien. Um, but because it is so close to our world and at such a parallel level, that's why you can get I believe actual portals between between the worlds. Um, 
uh, because if you were just talking about you know the the uh, uh, a generalized sense of the astral, well, the astral is sort of everywhere and nowhere really. Um, it's not at this level, but it is of this universe. Uh, and the demonic is quite different to that. Um, the demonic is um, is at the same level as us in a sense, but it is not of this universe. Uh, and that makes it quite different and very, very powerful when it interacts with our world. Uh, and this is really, you can learn, I, th I believe you can learn so much from this because the interaction of these two things is a bit like having a glitch in the system, really. Uh, but it is a natural part of our world. The interactions of these two worlds are a natural part of a, 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 a much broader, bigger scheme. But it's certainly not a monotheistic scheme. Uh, and it's not a mystical scheme. And it's the sort of um, experience which I think magicians have always been very interested in and have always sought out and witches have and and I think you can see why because uh, in some senses it's very accessible um, and it's it cuts very deeply in terms of its interaction with this world because it's not of this universe so uh, Now, how do, you, how do you build your relationship with that universe? Well, for a start, you have to have allies there. And uh, this is partly where I was talking about uh, the uh, relationship with Satan, um, with the hierarchical principles of that universe, because it is very practical. If it's practical, it is going to be hierarchical. That's just how it goes. Yeah. Um, Now that's that's one thing. You 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 develop a, a a relationship. You develop allies, and you develop an understanding and an empathy and a resonance, uh, with with that world. But the other thing is, you can start viewing it as the other world. You can start viewing it uh, as a another world that you have a particular relationship to and a particular interest in and uh, I think that will in itself accelerate the development um, but you have to always remember you're not giving yourself away you're doing this for yourself and you are you do are in the final analysis the, the person who actually calls the shots for yourself yeah not for the whole world, not for uh, other worlds, you know, but for yourself. You need to stand on your own two feet. And the demonic does seem to encourage that. It seems to encourage people standing on their own two feet. Um, now, of course, if you kind of go and just decide to just give yourself away, then you'll get the results of that. But uh, that's not especially what the demonic wants, you know. Um, the demonic will, I think, use uh, whatever's offered, yeah? Um, it doesn't have the same perspectives that we do, and it doesn't have the same perspectives of, of, of uh, harm or well-being or, and certainly not of morality, um, but that goes for a great deal of the spirit world. Um, so you have to uh, come into an actual relationship with it as the person you are and with the concerns you have and with the and with the desires that you have uh, and the important thing is to be honest and to uh, look after yourself really uh, and that will be entirely That will be entirely respected by the demonic in in my experience um, as I said before that's not there isn't uh devotion 
involved in religious practices concerned with uh, the demonic or the diabolical. Um, uh, there is, but these are, are, as I said, they're similar to the sexual bonds that people establish with each other. Um, uh, people no doubt have a lot of misconceptions about the demonic and uh, obviously culturally we have a great deal of misconceptions and there's an awful lot to overcome and shed um, but and and the thing is you can you you just you don't stop learning uh, you don't come to a point where oh yeah this here's here's the truth here's here's how things are um, you learn what you can, you learn what you have done so far, um, and you need to be open-minded and hang on to things with a light touch uh, in order to in order to progress, I believe. Uh, but the important thing is that uh, uh, you maintain your independence and well, the demonic isn't like something that's always trying to get into this world or something, or trying to uh, uh, gain influence over people. It is very practical. If if you go knocking on that door enough, you 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 may get an answer. Um, but they're not going to be. Uh, they're not that interested in, in they're, they're very interested in aspects of human beings, uh, but not so much in our culture that we've built, or, or because we, we, we really don't understand reality very well at all. Um, and they have a much better grasp of exactly how this world works, they really do. Um, anyway, I think that's the end of my ramblings, and I hope you enjoyed that. I'm just sitting in the park with my my dog here, here. and um, it, it reminds me of when I was uh, a lot younger and um, I used to go out for well, walks occasionally and sit in a park or something and one day I was sitting in Kensington Gardens and I think I was feeling quite tense and like you do when there's a build up and something's about to release and then then finally well then suddenly there was this I was sitting under a tree very much like this looking out over the round pond in Kensington Gardens and I could just see most extraordinary freedom in the in the trees opposite and in the movement of their leaves and darkness and the shadow and I could see this lawless reality pe peeking through it was so beautiful and so free and so liberating and uh, I remember I called that the, the chaos in creation at the time And the interest I have in the in the infernal and the natural, the way they interpenetrate, in a sense, it relates back to that also. That uh, there is this natural interaction, this natural interpenetration between the natural and the infernal. And that the doorways to the underworld are all around us in the natural world. We get somewhat cut off from them in our more civilized world. Uh, you start to see them in little places where it's crumbling in a city or where there's a certain amount of decay or uh, things are fallen fallow. You start to see the same thing. They just start to come through in its own way, but it's actually rooted in nature. Uh, I think that's why things like ruins and the uh, 
Mm. Like the borderland between uh, between things, the borderland between uh, uh, civilization and wilderness. Why that's particularly potent for magic and for doing magic. And there's so we always have this sense of the. Uh, it's actually there. It's actually there in the, all the old sources, really. This uh, this interpenetration and. Uh, the way it relates to magic and magical beings and our, on our coexistence and communication with magical beings. Uh, so, that's all pretty cool. Anyway, uh, I'm not sure if I can get this thing to actually, I can't get this to show you what it's like here, but uh, Thank you.